All right. All right, welcome, welcome to our Mentorship Masters, what I call round table meeting. This is where you guys get to ask me questions. And actually this, this particular uh, format was inspired by none other than John David Speedy, my man Speedy. Actually, uh, we had a closing together yesterday uh, that went, uh, went well, went without a hitch. Um, closed on a really, really nice property. Um, and Mina, another Mentorship Masters member, helped us with that as well. So uh, we're, we're off. We're off and running. Today, what I want to talk about, guys, we've got a lot to cover. And if you're like me, um, you don't really like meetings uh, like I don't. Um, you know, this, I've designed this to be different. You know, since I don't like meetings, uh, because I, I, I tend to think that meetings um, uh, are, are a waste of time. <laughs> Most of the time, uh, I've designed mine to be very different. I've designed mine to be very, very informative, very productive, and to give you guys what you're asking for, what you say you want. So without, um, without further ado, if you will, without further chit chat, let's get right into it because I know you guys are super duper busy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my, um, my screen with you guys and... Let's see. Uh, okay, we got that should be. All right. So I want to I want to launch into my PowerPoint on this topic that I have for you guys today. We're going to cover a lot of ground. If you guys have any questions along the way, you can unmute yourself and uh, just throw your questions out there. I, I mean, I, I love to um, handle questions as well. Uh, we've got the, the lovely Patty Lynn, who's going to be uh, transcribing some of this for us so that we'll be able to um, go back later and see the notes uh, from our, our talk today. So what I want to talk to you guys about right now is the, what I call the keys, uh, the key to success, the key to success, and that's time blocking. You know, we've covered this before. Some of the stuff that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to cover with you guys, um, especially if I see you not doing uh, the things that I've trained you on. Time blocking is super critical. So what is time blocking? What's it all about? Well, time blocking is a period of time that you essentially shut yourself off from the rest of the world and you do nothing but that number one thing and that's lead generation. That's what time blocking is all about. Now, time blocking can be anywhere from nine o'clock to, um, to 11. If you do a two hour block, it could be eight o'clock to 10. You could be eight o'clock to 11 if you wanna do three hours. Um, you could start it even earlier. It's up to you, but you have to do a, a two to three hour block of time every single day if you wanna be successful. Well, you say, but Nolly, um, man, I'm, I'm so busy. I don't have time to block off two to three hours. Well, the reality is if you don't block off time every single day to succeed in this game, you will not succeed. This is a principle that I've, I've um, been practicing for, uh, for several decades. Um, I do it every single day. Uh, actually, now I, I practice what I call a two by four. Um, and you know, you'll graduate to that. Uh, those of you that, that are generating all the leads that you want, uh, you can kind of graduate to where you can massage this a little bit. Um, you can do what I call a two by four. A two by four is where you time block two hours a day, four days a week. Okay, you take three days off. Um, if you're not generating all the leads that you that your heart desires, then you absolutely have to um, be time blocking. There's really no other way to do it. And, and, and so the question is, what do I do during my time block? Okay, time blocking is for, for really three activities. Number one is generating new leads. Okay, generating new leads. Number two, following up on existing leads. Okay, following up on existing leads. And number three, is developing and implementing marketing plans, okay? So let me say it again. Number one is generating new leads. Number two is following up on existing leads that you have. And number three is developing and implementing um, marketing plans, you know, designing those marketing plans. You know, this is not stuff I made up, guys. I learned this from Gary Keller, my mentor. Um, he taught me this years and years ago. 
um, about the key to time blocking. He learned it from someone else. You know, that's the, the way knowledge kind of transfers from in the village, right? It goes from person to person. And I'm, I'm imparting this to you guys. If you're not time blocking, you show me a person that's not successful in the game, in any game, okay? You show me a person that's not successful and I'll show you a person that's not time blocking, period. Um, now, there's a thing called the tyranny of the urgent. Um, I'm going to keep drilling this into you guys because I'm your coach. I'm your, your leader. That's my job. The tyranny of the urgent, the concept is that the urgent things will keep you from doing the important things. Okay. So some of you have stuff that is so urgent that you're not doing that, which is important. And in Pareto's principle, we learn that 20% of the activities that you do are going to yield you 80% of your results. And the 20% that's going to yield you the results is time blocking for lead generation, period. So uh, if you're time blocking and you're going on a listing appointment, that's not time blocking, okay? Time blocking is not for going on listing appointments. I never schedule listing appointments in my time block, okay? My time block is my time block. Essentially, the time block, that time does not exist. So when someone says, hey, could you call me at 9 in the morning? I have an appointment at that time. What is my appointment? It's my time block, okay? It's a hard fixed time that's on my schedule every single day or every, if, right now I'm on a two by four, so four days a week, it's a hard fixed time to which nothing else is there. Well, could you go pick this up for me during? No, I can't because I'm busy, okay? So just think about it. If, if you were in, um, you know, if, if, if you were in some, if you're in a movie, just think about it this way. It's the easiest way I can, analogy. If you're in a movie, uh, what do you do other things during the movie? No, you're in a movie. Okay. You get into the movie, you sit your butt down and you watch the movie. When the movie's over, you leave. That's what time blocking is. Same thing. You sit down, you lock yourself down into, into your, in your bunker is what I call it. Your time block bunker. You do not leave that bunker until you have accomplished your goal. Like it might be hey, today I'm going to make 15 calls or 20 calls or whatever, whatever your goals are. Um, so the, the natural question is, you know, like I said, what do I do during the, the time block? We've already covered that. Um, but we're also going to get into some very specific things that will help you guys generate more and more leads. Before we do that, um, I want to talk about clearing the blocks to your success. Uh, many of you, in, myself included, <laughs> Um, the reason why we're not getting the success that we say we want is because we have blocks. This is very important for you guys to understand this. Um, many of you, probably all of you, myself included, have blocks when it comes to our success. Okay, we have mental blocks, physical blocks, emotional blocks as well, and spiritual blocks. So if you're not getting success, if this is you, if you're doing the same thing and you're just not getting the right success, or you're trying different things, or you're trying this, or you're, you're going on the, the appointments, or you're making the calls, and you're just not getting the success that you know you could have, then the chances are you've got a block. There is a block somewhere, okay? And it might be, uh, it might be a mental block. Like I said, it might be a spiritual block. Um, if a mental block is just, you know, wrong thinking, okay? Many of you just don't have it's not a knock on you, by the way, when I say these things. I've got to tell you the hard truth because that's what you're paying me for. Um, many of you just don't have the right mindset, okay? You were, you were raised with the wrong mindset. You were raised here in the wrong things. You were raised around the wrong, you know, environments, if you will. And your beliefs are wrong. And so the, you might have a, a mindset as it relates to money, you know, a block related, related to money. Many people have a prosperity block. They just have a block when it relates to them generating income or having success, period. Uh, many people have success blocks. So I just want you to know that, that it's normal to have a block. Um, by the way, if, if you guys are not muted, if you're not talking, please mute yourself. Um, otherwise, there's going to be some background noise, and these are always going to be recorded uh, for, for you guys' further enjoyment. So I think, Darren, you're not muted. Um, let me mute you. I can mute you on my end as well. Um, but just mind yourself, guys, if you're not muted, um, we're going to be able to hear your background noise. Only unmute yourself um, when you need to, to, to say something. And you can cut me off and, and jump in the conversation at any time. 
Um, there's somebody else that's not muted because I'm hearing that echo. Let me see. Okay, it might be you, Teresa. I'm going to mute you. Okay. All right, everyone else is. Um, by the way, Patty Lynn, I'm going to make you an administrator later on so you'll be able to administrate some of this stuff in the back end. Yay! <laughs> so much fun. So half the success, half of the success battle, guys, is just knowing that you might have a block. You know, I've been talking to you guys, and I know that some of you, um, I was talking to a gentleman in our mentorship masters who um, he did five deals last year, but he did all five of them in one month. And then for the rest of the year, he didn't have any sales. He didn't have any <coughs> I'm going to mute Mina because I can hear you coughing. Um, guys, if, if you don't know how to mute yourself, um, I don't know if I can help you, but there's a, there's a little mute uh, button there somewhere. Um, just think when we have hundreds of people on these calls, uh, we have the, the right etiquette. So, um, so he did five deals in one month, and then for 12 months or 11 months, he had no other deals. That's a block, guys. I, there's no other way to say it. You're either not time blocking, okay? Uh, you're, you're either not doing what we talked about. Um, you're not doing the time block, the two hours a day, or you've got a block somewhere, okay? And so we'll, we'll help you. We'll work with you to get those blocks uh, cleared. Again, half the battle is just knowing the fact that you might have a block, um, you know, and just realize that, that that's a real thing. Um, a spiritual block is, you know, it, it can be any number of things that, that can block us spiritually, okay? Um, and, and so we'll, we'll continue to talk about these concepts as we move forward. If you guys have any questions around what I'm talking about, because I know some of this stuff is not everyday things that you hear, um, you know, be sure to, um, you know, unmute yourself and ask me a question. Just cut me off, and I'll be happy to answer any question you have. So this is what I call spiritual business mastery. This is what you're seeing right now is... Um, a, something that I pioneered in helping people understand the, the, the road of success. Because success, guys, is super duper easy. If you're not generating $100,000 a year or $100,000 a month, whatever your goal is, then you've got a block. There's a block there because your goals are absolutely doable. The things that you want to do are able to be done, um, but the only reason why you're not getting it done is uh, potentially because you have a block. Um, by the way, I have a chat. There's a chat um, option here, too. So if you guys, let me make sure my chat window is open. Uh, okay, so this is Darren is asking, um, does blocking have to, have to be done in the morning? Okay, that, that's a great question. Um, oh, microphone is in the lower left-hand corner. Thanks for pointing that out. Lower left-hand corner. Um, is where you can find your microphone. Um, does, does time blocking have to be done in the morning? Well, um, the, the answer is no, it doesn't, okay? Because some of you guys might have conflict with that, right? You can't do it in the morning. It's best done in the morning when you get, when you get to a place in your career where you can do time blocking in the morning. It's always best done <laughs> on an empty stomach. Not really. You know, have your breakfast first. It's fine. But it's always, it's always best done when you have the most mental clarity. And we found, you know, scientists have found that the most mental clarity comes after a good night's sleep, okay? So whenever that happens to be for you. Some of you guys aren't sleeping enough. I mean, that's a whole nother thing. We're going to cover a lot of stuff in our Mentorship Masters because I want you guys to have a holistic approach to success. Um, okay, so uh, looking at these, this is M-A-P-S-T-M-A-T. So it's Mindset, Activities, People, Systems, Tools, Money, Accountability, and Training. So Right now, we're just going to be covering mindset and activities, okay? What is the number one activity of a successful listing agent? Lead generation, okay? And many of you have not gotten off. This is base one and base two. And this is the reason why our book of the month, guys, is the power of your subconscious mind. That's the book of the month right now that we have for Mentorship Masters. Every one of you guys should already have a copy of that book and be reading it. Okay, I've been reading it every single day. Yesterday, I read for about three hours. Uh, I cheated, um, and I, I did the audio because I was driving around a lot, and so I just did it that way. So, um, but this is what I call spiritual business mastery, and this is the trajectory of how your success is going to move, okay? 
You're going to start, number one, by renewing of the renewing of your mind. Romans 12. Uh, Romans 12 says to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is, you know, the right thing, the, the acceptable thing for you to do. And it says, be you not transformed to this world, okay, but be, but be renewed, okay, in, in the mind, okay. So, so here's the thing. We, we don't want to be transfigured or transformed to this world, but we do want our mind to be transformed, okay. Um, by the, and, and it says, be, be, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay. So how do we do that? Well, we do that by bringing in the right input. OK, first of, first of all, you guys got to watch the stuff you look at. OK, um, the, the, the eyes are the window of the soul. And as, as scripture says, and I've got to be very, very careful of the movies I watch, the kind of posts that I read. The reason why I stopped watching the news about 17 years ago and I'm completely uninformed as it relates to news is because it's mostly bad. I mean, there's a little good stuff in there, but it's mostly crap. And the thing is, if you don't, it's just like it's just like the human body. If you put a bunch of crap in, you eat fast food every day, three day, three meals a day, every single day, you're going to end up with a crappy body, and you're going to end up with a real bad mind. The mind is no different. When you're putting in this bad input, you know, gossip, um, uh, drama, and all this other stuff that has no place in 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 the, in, in the life of a successful uh, listening specialist. When you put all that garbage into your mind, you're going you're, you're gonna to rightly so be screwed up mentally. And, and if, your mental, if your mental game is not right, nothing else in your life is going to be a success, okay? Nothing else in your life. So, so that's the reason why most of the time that I'm spending with you guys, because I've talked to each and every one of you individually, and I kind of know where you guys are at, most of you are stuck here in mindset and activities. Listen to me real closely. You can go to all the seminars you want. You can read all the books that you want. You can read all the articles. You can, you can listen to Nolly Williams till, you blue, till I'm blue in the face, okay? But you will not achieve success until your mind is right, okay? It, success doesn't, doesn't come through going to the next class or the next seminar or the next webinar or the next trick or paying the next, uh, for the next lead generation idea or paying Zillow for leads. That's not how you get success, guys. Success really comes first and foremost in the mind. When your mind is successful, when your mind is right, see, that's the reason why any successful person that already knows the, the, the success game, like once, once I get you guys to where you're doing 100,000 a year, like, like, it's, like it's just super easy, then I get you to 250 a year and that's super easy for you. Then we take you to 500,000 a year and that's super easy for you. The truth is, let's say, for example, I've, I've gotten you, you know, through this process, we've gotten you to 500,000. It's not me getting you there, right? It's God getting you there and you yourself doing the work. Um, but I'm your guide showing you how to do it. So let's say you're consistently doing a quarter million a year for three years in a row. I don't care. You, I can take everything you have. I can pull your bank. I can pull every dollar from your bank account, leave you with 25 cents, and you will still hit a quarter million dollars. I can put you in a whole new market. OK, I can I can uproot you from Miami to Cleveland, Ohio. You don't know a soul and you'll still get your quarter million. You'll be back to your quarter million within 18 months. Guaranteed. Why? Because your mind is right. But if I take everything that you know out, then you won't be able to hit that success. That's why the mindset is the super duper most important thing. Then it goes into activities. See, you guys have to be doing the right things in the right order. And okay, let me say it again. A lot of you guys are doing the right stuff. Oh, Nolly, I did these ads and I went to this new community and I started passing out flyers and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Great, I'm gonna cheer you on because I'm your cheerleader, but you're doing the right stuff in the wrong order. And right stuff in the wrong order equals ultimately less than success. May not be failure, but it's always gonna uh, lead to less than success. Um, let me see. Uh, let me. I've got a couple comments. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay. Thanks. One of you guys is saying I stopped watching um, Dateline and murder shows on TV. LOL. You know, I used to love to watch um, like Forensic Files, and I find it fascinating. Like these these criminals, the criminal minds, and all this kind of stuff. I mean, that stuff is fascinating. It is absolutely fascinating to the Homo sapien. 
We love that kind of entertainment. But what happens though, is it, it pushes us back from a mental standpoint from the success we want, okay? You've got to control the input that you bring in. So, so this is essentially the backbone of everything I'm gonna be teaching you revolves around this, mindset and activities. Then you surround yourself with the right people. Uh, you know, pretty soon when you graduate from these areas or you get pretty good at this, you're gonna be like doing so much business that you need to hire people. And the people that you hire are going to help you get the success. I want you to understand this real clear that 91.3 or 92% of the activities that you do on a daily basis, I guarantee you can be delegated. I guarantee, and the reason I guarantee that is because I have a 46 step system. I just uploaded it to the Facebook group. There's 46 steps to a successful listing. From the time you take the listing, you generate the lead, to the time you close it and beyond. Okay, there's five steps that happen after you close the deal. There's 46 steps. And you only have to be doing about three of those, okay? If you're really, really good, you only have to do one of them, okay? But there's about three to five things that you may never want to scrape off your plate. That's okay, but that still means that there's 41 activities that you can and should delegate. That's, that's in the people area. And you'll get to that. Some of you guys aren't at that level yet. Systems is always important, having the right systems, the right tools, the right money, um, the right kind of account, the money mindset is really what that's about, the right accountability and then the right training. So this is the kind of stuff that I'm, I'm gonna be teaching you guys every single time that we get together. Now, what's this in the middle? You've got the S, the M, the P, and the E. That represents the fact that God within us, that God placed within us four bodies, okay? We have, a, we have right here, we have a spiritual body. That's the eternal body. You remember Wayne Dyer said that the, the body is nothing more than a garage where we temporarily park our soul. That's all the body is. But what, what's the eternal is the spiritual body, the spirit man. That's the man that Jesus came and talked to. And he had a very difficult time tapping into it. And he tried to get us to understand things like that if we could, if we could find success spiritually, guess what? As within, so is without. We would have uh, that success on the outside if we had it on the inside. There's, there is another kind of person that has success on the outside but is a terrible you know, wreck on the inside. And we don't want that either. So spiritual body is the first body. The mental body is the second body that God gave us. The emotional body, okay? That's all your emotional system, guys. It begins from the heart all the way through your electronic system that God has placed within you. That's the emotional body, okay? And then there's the physical body. It's important to have all these four bodies in good condition, okay? And then uh, right there in the middle, that's you, okay? Uh, you're the one that's gonna be doing the work. You're the one that's gonna be not only learning this stuff, but paying it forward as well. So that's the, um, what I call spiritual business mastery. Now, let me, let me um, so here is something that, um, that I learned from uh, Joseph Murphy, and that is that all frustration is based on unfulfilled desire. That's something that you, um, that you'll read here in the power of your subconscious mind. Let's talk about that for a minute, or just, just, just think about that. All frustration is based on unfulfilled desire. Now, I like this. David, David uh, commented, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report uh, or, or, or repute, um, if there be any excellence or if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Absolutely scriptural, guys. Um, and that's in Philippians 4, verse 8. Thank you, David, it, for whatever is, is pure, lovely, and good. Remember that there are nine fruits of the Spirit, nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, but then there are 13 fruits of the other spirit, the spirit we don't want, the demonic spirit. And we don't want any, you know, just go back and read the fruits of the spirit. You'll see, I call them the divine nine. And then there's the mean 13. There's 13 bad ones that we don't want to have anything to do with. We'll talk a little bit about some of those in a minute. So all frustration, guys, is, um, is based uh, on unfulfilled desire. What does that mean? Well, when I hear you guys talking and you say, Nolly, man, I'm trying this. I've been making my calls. I've been passing out uh, copies of my success book 
and I'm just not getting any traction. Nobody's listening with me. Nobody's calling me back. Nobody. Well, what's happening, what I'm hearing is that you're frustrated. Okay. And sometimes, like I was talking to a good friend of mine last night, he was talking about how he got into a big argument with his wife over something stupid. But why? Because he was frustrated about something else. So he ended up taking it out on his family. Well, when you think about yourself being frustrated, you're not, ah, you're just tense. You, you're just not hitting. You're not getting what you want. It's based on unfulfilled desire. So you know within you that there is better, that you can do better, that you're capable of doing better, that you're destined for better. You know that within you, but there's just something that's holding you back. So just remember that all frustration is based on unfulfilled desire. So how do we, how do we break that cycle? Well, we just, we just basically, for me, it's always, it's about prayer. It's about centering myself, meditation, say, you know, what am I really frustrated about? Is it, you know, what is really holding me back? And ask yourself these questions. Why am I not successful? What, and, and I ask myself the same thing, you know, uh, just because you see me on stage with, with, you know, speaking to 300, 400 people, or however many it is, uh, uh, or you see me, um, you know, on Facebook, or I've got followers and all that, that doesn't mean I've reached the ultimate success that God has for me in this realm. You know, I see myself uh, as God, God sees me, okay? And I'm speaking to thousands of people, tens of thousands, you know, stadiums filled with people. So what I'm sharing with you guys is also for me, all the time it is, okay? Because I'm a lifelong learner. I'm constantly getting better. So you think about it, what is it that's really causing me the frustration? Um, is it really this thing that I'm blaming? Or is it really the fact that I'm not living up to the full potential that God birthed within me? Maybe I just don't know how to uh, live up to that full potential. And I've talked to you guys and some of you are like, look, for the life of me, I cannot figure out why this isn't working. That's a block, okay? It, the natural way of things is for you to have success, okay? That's the natural way. If you're not successful, if it's hard, if it's not easy, see, Christ said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, okay? I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. If you're not having an easy life, there's a block, you have a block, and a block is somewhere. It's either in your physical body, mental, spiritual, or emotional body. And I can help you release these blocks. I have several friends of mine um, that are even better than me um, at helping you kind of identify what those blocks are. Um, but the other question that you want to ask yourself is, what am I supposed to be doing in this realm? Like, what am I here for? And um, when, you, when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, um, that can cause frustration because you should be frustrated. You know, you're not, you're not in the center of God's will. You should be frustrated. And a lot of people, guys, think that being in the center of God's will means that I have to quit real estate and go do this. No. Whatever your purpose is on the earth, like, for example, my purpose, I'm a spark. I had to figure that out, you know, and, and flesh that out. Um, every single one of you has a copy of this book that I wrote called Discovering Your Divine Destiny. Okay. It's out on um, the Next Level Insiders Club. You can just download it. It's a complete, you know, it's a real book. And it's got a ton of exercises that, that, that are going to help you to discover what God placed you on the earth for. Okay. It's called Discovering Your Divine Destiny. So you, you should be working on it. I know you're working on a lot of stuff already, and I hate to keep piling stuff on your plate. But really, um, working on yourself is, um, uh, you know, the most important thing. So, so what I've discovered is I'm a spark. And somebody's asking, like, what's a spark? Well, what you'll, what you'll discover, guys, when you, in this thing where we talk about what is your purpose, you know, what's your ultimate greatness, what's your destiny, what do, what do you it, – it's – I don't see it so much as a doing – as it is a being, okay? What are you here to, not necessarily to do, but to be? See, us doing is not that important. Remember Christ said that in that day, many will come to him saying, Lord, I did this for you, and Lord, I did that for you, and Lord, I did that. And he'll say, depart from me for I never knew you, okay? Well, here's the thing. It's not all about doing, it's about being. Are you being who God created you to be? Every one of us is a human being, not a human doing, okay? We're a human being. So what I am, what I've discovered is that I'm a spark. That's what God created me to be, okay? Now, what is a spark? A spark is like a little flame. In other words, 
I'm here to not, not necessarily, I'm not a burning flame. I'm just here to light a fire. I'm a fire starter. That's, that's what a spark is, a fire starter. Now, I can't motivate you, okay? You might feel motivated, but that's you motivating yourself. That, that's the God within you stirring up motivation. All I can do is spark something within you, okay? But guess what? A little tiny spark can start a great big engine, right? You've got a great big engine. I'm that little tiny spark that God sent me here just to ignite you, just to put that little spark, that's all it's going to take, for it to blow up and become something great for you, okay? So if you're not being who you, so, 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 so since I've come to understand that I'm a spark, that's what I am. Now, some of you might be something else. Like, for example, my, my wife is a caregiver. That's, her, that's what she is, you know? Um, and she, she likes to take care of people. And so whatever it is that you do, you can do that through real estate. It doesn't mean, oh, well, since I'm a spark, that means I need to go over here and, you know, help orphans in Africa. Well, that might be what God sends me to do, but he might just send me to go sell some more houses. What's wrong with that? I mean, I'm a missionary no matter where I work, okay? If I was in plumbing, <laughs> guess what? I'd be doing coaching and training and teaching and helping people that, that are in plumbing. It, it, it's no different. What I am doesn't impact what I do. I hope you guys understand that. So all frustration is based on unfulfilled desire. Um, the next one I have for you guys, if I can get this thing to, to go here for me. Let's see. Um, faith, I love this quote. This quote is another one from the power of your subconscious mind. Remember, scripture says that faith um, is the evidence of things hoped for, or the, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, when you look at, when you break down the, the, uh, the word, substance is a science term. When you look at the Greek, uh, and evidence is a, is a word of law, okay? So what Paul was saying is that when you have faith, okay, it, it's not blind faith. Like, oh, I just believe, uh, hang on. No, he said it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, okay? So substance is actually a scientific term Okay, and evidence is a legal term that, that Paul was using science. So he's using science and law to show that faith is not just waddy waddy, it's, the, it's real. I mean, like it's re more real than anything else. Okay, um, what's, what's really not real, and, th and that's the reason why we're, we live in an upside down world. Okay, I call it the prison planet. It's an upside down, topsy turvy world that we live in. So what we see is not what's real, guys. It's just what's projected. What's real is what's unseen, okay? Because make no mistake about it, we live in a spiritual realm and there's things happening all around us that we can't necessarily see with the eyes, but they're there. So that's why I like this quote from Dr. Joseph Murphy that says, faith is accepting as true what your reason and senses deny. <laughs> that's powerful. Faith is accepting as true what your reason and senses deny. So what does that mean? That means that if you tell me that you're destined to do $100,000 a year, then you already have $100,000 a year. You say, but Nolly, I don't see it in my bank account. Well, we walk by faith and not by sight, okay? It, it, you accept as true what your reason and senses deny. Speak that which is not as though it were, scripture says. So when I say that, you know, I'm doing a million dollars a year, Okay, that's what I do. That's what I'm doing. And I believe it. So, we, so the faith comes in where you basically, there is absolutely no doubt and you have the feeling associated. Okay, this is very important. You have the feeling associated with it. So if I was to, if you were to hit that 100,000, how would you feel? How would you, how would that feel to you? Okay, whatever your number is, how would it feel? Well, that's the same way you should feel right now. Okay. Don't wait for, for you to when you have the thing that you say you want, when you have it physically. Because if you, if you know that that's what God has for you, okay, you've already worked that out, that's your destiny, then you already have it. It just hasn't manifested itself in, into the window of your awareness yet, or it, it just hasn't become tangible yet. Like the iPhone was an idea in someone's mind before it was invented, before it be, became a tangible thing, but it still was a real thing in the ethereal world or in the spiritual plane, if you will, what we're talking about, okay? So that's very important for you guys to understand. 
And then the next uh, concept I want you to look at is these, these four words, which I want you to absolutely work on eradicating from your vocabulary and life. That's fear, doubt, worry, and lack. Okay, I want you to, to, to because these four will absolutely rob you of your success. If you show me a person that's not successful, they're not time blocking, okay? And they're in one of these states. They're in fear, they're in doubt, they're in worry, or they're in lack, okay? Well, why shouldn't we fear? Because scripture says perfect love casts out all fear. So when you think about it, fear is what, what people say the opposite of hate is love. No, the opposite of, 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 uh, of love or the opposite of love is hate. No, the opposite of love is fear, okay? Scripture says perfect fear casts out, uh, a perfect love, sorry, perfect love casts out all fear. So if, you're, if you find yourself in fear, um, surrender it, let it go. You know, uh, be with the feeling of fear, acknowledge the feeling, and then release it. Just let it go, let it go. Um, doubt is another thing, okay? Scripture says that if that person doubts, if, if, if for the man that doubts, he's like a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways, let him not think that he'll receive anything from the Lord. Um, that's, so if you have fear and doubt, those will automatically cancel out your blessing. So if you have a blessing, let's just say, what I want you to understand is, if I can, if I can get you to understand this, think about a radar screen, okay? Um, think about a radar on a, um, on a submarine, okay? There's a big radar, but, the, but there's a lot going, out, going on outside the radar, okay? So your radar is only like a one square inch screen that you can see. That's your radar. But there's a whole lot going on outside your radar that things that God is working on for you, okay? And his messengers are working on for you, right? The, the um, scripture says that we have messengers, we have ministering angels that are helping on our behalf. Um, these things are coming in toward you, but they're not in your view yet, right? So you're looking at like, Okay, the, like let's say God is, God is bringing in your first $100,000 year. He's got five listings coming in, and they're slowly coming in. But you can't, here's your radar right here, but you can't see these five listings coming in, right? Then you start to have fear. Well, maybe it's not going to happen. Ah, somebody told me I wasn't going to get it. Guess what? Instead of moving toward you, it starts to move away from you because what you're doing is you're repelling. See, when you, when you have faith, you attract. When you believe, you attract right? When you have fear and doubt, you repel. So those things that are moving for you or toward you are starting to go away from you, okay? Then you start to have faith again, they start coming back toward you. That's the way it works, guys. Now, worry. Jesus said in chapter uh, 6 of uh, Matthew uh, 6.33, do not worry. It's a command. <laughs> do not worry, okay? You, God's got your back. He's got you. He, don't worry about it. Um, and then lack does not exist. Okay, lack does not exist. It, it, it's, you might think it exists because it exists in your life because, of, because you've allowed it to, but lack, lack doesn't exist. It, it's just something that is, um, there is no lack in the world that God made, okay? Now there is, a, it, there is a crazy distribution of wealth, but there's no lack, okay? And that, that, that would take an, uh, you know, a day to unpack that, but I will unpack that for you guys um, as we do our training together, you know, as time goes by. Um, but just remember, fear, worry, um, fear, doubt, worry, and lack, you have to remove from your, from your um, experience, from your experience of life. If you can remove those four things, you're going to be a lot further towards success. Now, I wrote a book called Triple My Listings, and some of you guys are like, man, this guy, <laughs> where does he find the time to do all this crap, right? Writing all these books and stuff. So, um, in triple my listings, I've got some concepts that, I, that I'm going to be sharing with you. And let me see, let me, let me just do this. I'm going to show you guys um, the book real quick. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, here it is. is this it? Oh, here it is. I've got it open already. So this is a book that I wrote um, for you guys. Um, I started writing this book about two weeks ago. I just finished it uh, day before yesterday. And it's called Triple My Listings, 27 Marketing Ideas. Um, by the way, I'm sorry, we, I made a hard transition there. Uh, <laughs>
just talking to you guys about all this spiritual stuff, I, I look at it as all the same, right? Um, but now we're transitioning into lead generation. I want to get into that. So I wrote a book called Triple My Listings, 27 Marketing, Idea, Marketing Ideas for Free Seller Leads. Um, it struck me as I was writing this book that I've never, ever, ever uh, marketed for, for buyer leads. I've never done it. Um, and, and, and this kind of came across in my thought when, uh, because Mina and I were talking uh, about uh, Zillow leads and, um, and, and buying leads, you know, buying leads from different places. And most of the time, what you're going to find when you buy leads is that those leads are, um, they're, 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 they're buyer leads. Okay. And I was explaining to Mina months ago that I've never, ever purchased a lead. I've never bought leads. I just never have. And so a lot of people find that a bit fantastic and hard to believe. Um, and so I said, you know what, I'm going to write down all the ways that I've generated leads in my career because every single lead that I've ever generated, uh, first of all, I don't, I don't market for buyers. So that's the reason, probably the main reason why I never paid for leads. There's nothing wrong with paying for leads, by the way. I think it's great if, if you can get leads that way, it's great. You know, if they actually pay off, I mean, if you actually generate the leads, then it's good to pay for them. I mean, it's okay. Um, but I never have because most of the tactics that I've found are tactics that don't involve generating seller leads. And I've never once in my entire life marketed for a buyer. Um, I've had buyers, but when you focus on listings, guys, you're going to have all the buyers you can possibly handle. Okay. Um, uh, and how did, let me see. Uh, <laughs> so, so Annette says, yeah, she, she paid for leads. And how did that work out? Not, you know, um, you know, work it, pay, you know, getting leads that way could work. I, I don't know if it does or not, but I've, I've endeavored to put down 27 different ways because uh, I'm tired of you guys, uh, not tired of it, but I'm, I, I'm at the point where I'm like, guys, it's not that hard to get leads. Let's go get them, right? And so you're like, well, yeah, Nolly, how do I do that? So I wrote this book. It's called Triple My Listings. And this is the book here that you see on your screen. These are all the pages. And they're just ideas. They're marketing ideas that you can, that you can basically you know, hijack from me that will share with you exactly what I've done, 27 different techniques to generate tons and tons of listing leads. Now, this is going to be, um, I'm, I'm doing the final editing of it uh, as we speak. So sometime next week or so, uh, I'm going to push this book over to you guys so that you can download the whole thing and then you can go to work on the ideas that you like best. Just keep in mind that you don't have to implement all 27 strategies. <laughs> you only have to implement uh, about three strategies, okay? And if you do three strategies, you'll get your 100,000. I guarantee you'll do 100,000 a year if you implement these, you know, three of these strategies. If you want to implement more strategies, then you'll make more money. It's up to you. Um, okay, so uh, David's saying buying leads also wastes a lot of time. They advertise that getting one uh, sales, it'll pay for itself, but, but, but that they don't, let's see, they don't count the cost uh, of the lost time closing the bad leads. Oh, I, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, so what David's saying is, um, David, are you unmuted? You want to talk? I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, so, yeah, yeah I, I actually can't say that I never bought leads. I did it. Yeah. Um, and that's how they sell you. They say, well, if you get one sale, it'll, it'll pay for it. But the thing is, the cost of buying leads is not just the cost you pay to Zillow or whomever. The cost is also all of the time you spend running around with these terrible leads that you could be doing something more productive. I like it. That's a good point. I never even thought of that. Yeah. Thank you, David. Leave it to David to come up with some great ideas. He's, he's a great resource. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. from being stupid. <laughs> So, so um, you guys are going to have access to this book, but what I want to do is I want to start unpacking some of these. So I'm going to spend, I'm going to, I'm going to work on one of these each time that we get together um, just to unpack it for you guys. What I mean is just to kind of go into deeper detail on it. All right. So um, let's move along. So idea number one, this is the only idea I want to share with you today. And that's idea number one in the book. You'll find this idea, you know, on pages 20 through 24 um, of the book. 
And that is communicate with your sphere of influence via email every single month. Now that might sound like um, something very basic and it is basic, but it's time on the task over time. Okay, time on the task over time. Uh, I just sent out my newsletter this month. Uh, I got a referral from it and I got a, a listing from just from sending my newsletter out. Okay, it's just one little thing that you can do um, and you need to be communicating with your entire sphere of influence. It's, some people say email's dead. I got news for you. <laughs> it may be dying, but it ain't dead. <laughs> okay. um, and if you can communi communicate with all of them through email messenger or some other method, that's fine. You know, you know layer on top of these concepts, uh, you know, other things that are working for you. But what I found is that if I do an email out to my list every single month, um, it's very effective. So I want to share with you some things that I wrote in the book. Your sphere of influence, first of all, is your most critical, uh, what I call lead generation source. It's the most critical. Even though you don't feel like it is, it is, okay? But just bear in mind, guys, that these people are only buying or selling every six to nine years, okay? So if all you talk about when you contact them is real estate, you're gonna be completely irrelevant to them for most of the time. Like for six, like let's say they just bought a house, you're not gonna be relevant to them for another in our years, if all you bring them is content about real estate. Just, just want you to understand that. Um, so retain, retaining a current client is more important than generating a new one. Okay, that's very important to understand. A lot of people miss that. Uh, unfortunately, a great many real estate agents spend vast sums of money, time, attention, and energy trying to generate new relationships while completely abandoning their current ones. Okay, if you orphan your clients, your competitors are waiting in line to adopt them. So that's very, very important. NAR says that 70% of our business comes from, according to the studies, 70% of our business comes from our sphere of influence. Okay, so it's very important uh, not to neglect that group. Hold on, guys, I need to, somebody, I'm hearing some sounds here from somebody. Okay, I cannot figure out who that is. Can y'all hear that? Yeah. It's Saki. It's who? It's oh, Peterson. Saki. Okay, I can't even see him on here. I got too many people on. It won't. It won't show me everybody. So Peterson, if you can hear us, um, if you can, uh, or Saki, you can, you can uh, mute yourself. Thank you. Um. Okay, so seventy percent, seven out of ten. So that means if you're going to make a hundred thousand dollars this year, you said, Nolly, I want a hundred thousand dollars. Well, where is 70,000 of that going to come from? Your sphere of influence, okay? So make sure you're hitting them every single month. Um, there's a quote that I wrote down from Alex Sharp, a good friend of mine. He says, capital flows to the greatest contribution, okay? Capital flows to the greatest contribution. What that means is we get paid back in relation to the value that we create, okay? People want to know, well, man, Nali, um, how, are you, how are you making five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year in real estate. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's because I've created that level of value. Okay. Come on, this is gonna, sorry, guys, this is going to bother me till I. Uh, hey, hey, Noli. Yeah. You click on uh, participants at the bottom. Okay. Then you spread it out. You can see it's not muted, but it's Saki. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to give, um, in the future, I'll give Patty Lynn administrative rights. And then that way she can she can uh, do this for me. I do not see him here. I have a different dashboard than you guys have, uh, unfortunately, so it doesn't show me. Um, you know what? Let me do this. Hey, Saki, can you hear us? Saki, mute yeah, I can hear you. Can you mute yourself? Okay, here, here. I, I, I just he came up, so I was able. To, okay, I think I just muted you. Guys, remember, um, if you can, uh, please mute yourself because it's, it's important, you know. Okay, so, Saki, I still can hear you. Yeah, I can see you on good knowledge. Can you, <laughs> can you mute yourself? Mute myself. Yeah, there you go. Okay, perfect. Because we hear all the background noise. I think there's uh, some, uh, some background noise there, but we got that cleared up. Thank you, Saki. Peterson. All right, so. Capital flows to the greatest contribution. So what does that mean? That means when you create more value, 
you get paid more, okay? When you create more value, and the value is not in your mind, uh-uh. The value is in the mind of your client. It's what, what they value is, is what's, what's of value, okay? Um, that's very important to understand that, guys. Um, so it's not what I think they, that people should have, but what do they want? It's not what I think you guys should learn, but what do you want to learn? And you guys are telling me every day what you want to learn when you're telling me, hey, Nolly, man, I tried this and I tried that. It's just not working. What do I do next? And that's why I'm bringing you the training like the one I'm bringing today. Um, okay, so a couple last thoughts I want to bring up, up on that. Um, setting up your, your monthly e-newsletter should take about five minutes. Um, I use the one from More Solds, M-O-R-E-S-O-L-D-S.com, company that I own and created. Um, if you're a mentorship master's member, just let me know if you want it, you'll get a complimentary uh, uh, subscription. I mean, you guys, everything that I have, you just say, Nolly, I want that. And you got it, right? You don't have to pay for anything because you're part of my mentorship master's group, okay? Um, there might be some things you have to qualify for uh, by doing certain things, like you gotta close your first transaction before you get this or that. But that's very few things that are like that, okay? So, uh, so that's idea number one. There's 27 ideas there. Make sure you read your copy uh, once you get your hands on it of the book. Um, and pick some ideas that you love so that you can start getting your success. Um, I want to wrap up with a couple of things. Um, I want to remind you guys of what you're getting from Mentorship Masters because I think it's important for you, to, you know, some, for you to be reminded to know that you take advantage of everything you have available to you. Uh, we do have a weekly group coaching call from Exponential Collaboration Group. That's on Wednesdays mostly. So uh, be sure that you're uh, plugged into that. We have the group coaching roundtable, which is what I'm doing right now. Again, this was inspired by um, David Speedy. He said, man, um, it's cool that Group 4610 is doing their thing every week, but we want to hear from you. So I'm going to be doing these. I don't know if I'll do them every week, but probably about three times a month, you'll have a, a call like this with me. Um, the, the club, the, the insiders club is another thing that you have access to, uh, the monthly millionaire success secrets video training. That's actually training that I do on video that I'm going to be making available to you guys. Uh, those are classes that I hold locally record and make available. Um, and then, uh, we're going to be doing our full day live retreats. Now the next retreat is going to be in Las Vegas. Okay. Originally I was going to have it here in Austin the week before, but I said, you know what? Las Vegas is a, is a cheap city to fly to. Um, the, the airfare is cheap, uh, and I'm going to be there already. So instead of having you fly to Austin one week and then the next week meet me in Vegas, because I would love for you guys to be at this Next Level Agents Live, um, I'm going to be there for two days. Um, I'm going to fly in a day early. I'll give you my itinerary. I'm, I'm going to give it to, to Patty um, on, our, on our group. Patty's our success coach, guys, and she's going to be sharing more information about her. Um, but yeah, I want you guys to be there. I think it's, uh, we've got discount tickets um, uh, available to this thing, but we're going to have, we're going to have a, uh, an evening where we get together for dinner and you guys just get to hang out. We get to love on each other and get to know each other better. Um, but we'll be there for two full days and we'll probably play hooky from some sessions and just hang out together. <laughs> so, so that's going to be going on. Um, and we'll be posting a lot more about this um, in our group. Um, remember the chain of command. I just want to remind you guys of this. So if I'm your direct sponsor into um, uh, EXP, then you can always contact me directly. If not, contact your, your sponsor that sponsored you in. If they don't know the answer, they'll get together with me um, and provide you the answer. I'm going to provide you guys with a copy of this handout too, because I think it'll be very valuable for you. Uh, remember, what's your genius? Um, we need your help. So uh, you guys have been super duper, uh, who's that? Uh, Wade says, I've li I lived there 30 years. You lived in Vegas for 30 years, Wade? Wow. That's cool. Um, and, and then uh, <laughs> you've been there, you've lived there 30, 30 years. Yeah, hotel management was not that cool. I'm glad to be back to Texas where I'm from. Yeah, we're glad to have you back, brother. That's great, man. <laughs> I don't know if you'll want to go back or not, but yeah. Um, Annette says she'll be there for sure. Um, and, uh, Annette, you're in Vegas, aren't you? <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so whatever your genius is guys, whatever you're good at, um, 
you know, I want, I want you guys to be able to contribute to our, cause it's not all about me. You know, sometimes we make it like it's about me and it really isn't guys. Um, I'm the person that God designated in your life to help you, but it's not all about me. There's, there are people in this group, trust me, that are far better than me, even at coaching and teaching and, 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 and training and leadership. They don't know it yet. Some of them, but they are. Okay. Um, and, and, a, and a true leader is about generating leaders, not followers, okay? If you're a true leader, it's, for you, it's all about how many leaders can, can I bring up? That's what Jesus was about, you know? He was about bringing up leaders, not followers, okay? Now, we're followers, too, of Christ, but it, 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 it's, it doesn't stay that way. At some point, you begin leading. So whatever your genius is, share it with the group. We'd love to, um, to tap into your resource of what you're good at. Um, don't forget to, to, to go through Workplace. We've got a tons of announcements there. Um, and uh, if you have any questions for me, um, as usual, um, I kind of went through my time here. But let me just show you. Let me just log into Workplace because I, I think uh, here we go. I think it's good for us to just refresh. Oh, it's not that. Here we go. So I, so here's our mentorship masters group. Let me go back. Sorry, I'm going to the wrong thing here. Okay, so mentorship masters. So here's our group here. And um, for those of you that, that haven't uh, logged in or, or haven't logged in in a while, um, every, you know, three or four times a week, I'm going to be posting here. Uh, this is like yesterday I posted something about that you need to be joining your local groups. You, there's local and state groups. And if you want to stay connected, I, I know in our older brokerages, like when I was at Keller Williams, I could just walk in the office and go to the water cooler and just at, you know, especially the newer agents like to have that. So join one of these groups. You have a, like I ha we have a Texas group. We have an Austin group. You get, there's a Las Vegas group. There's a group, you know, for wherever you are. So make sure you, you join your local group. Um, Patty Lynn's been posting a lot of stuff. She's our success coach. So make sure you, you read through that. Um, sometimes I'll just jump on with an encouraging word <laughs> while I'm out and about. Um, I just put on the 46 step listing system. And remember, there's only three to five of these things that you should personally be doing eventually. I mean, you'll do them all for now, but eventually you'll, you'll, you won't. Um, this is Lucas and I. We were goofing off earlier this week. We were hanging out. Um, we went. He, we took him to a closing. Uh, I took him to a closing that I had, and we just got to, to hang out that way, um, et cetera. So anyway, I'm going to finish up by saying I love you guys. Um, we're at the top of the hour. Thanks for your time. Um, if you have any questions for me, post them. And until next time, has this been helpful? It's been good. Yes, thank you, Nolly. Yes, thanks. You bet. Love y'all. Thanks, Nolly. Yeah, thanks, Nolly. You bet. Love you too. Bye. Find the book, Nolly. The new.